Jade sculpture is one of the earliest types of sculpture in China. 5,000 years ago, the first jade Chinese dragon was produced by the consummate craftsmanship of the Hongshan culture, revealing the charm of jade sculpture. Then, during the Xiong dynasty 3,000 years ago, jade pieces became an essential part of etiquette as well as part of ornaments the nobility could not do without. The grave solemnness of the ritual use of jade as well as its most lively and lifelike aspect can be found in the mysterious dragon, this menacing tiger, or this lovely rabbit. With the arrival of the Qing dynasty, the development of jade sculpture reached its apex. The Imperial Palace of Beijing exhibits several pieces of jade that fully reflect the exquisite craftsmanship of Qing times. During the reign of Emperor Qianlong, a jade stone of six tons was discovered in the areas of Xinjiang Hutian. The emperor commanded the stone to be carved to depict the story of the legendary emperor Da Yu, who controlled the floods. The sculptors were divided into several groups, working day and night during seven years, until 1787 when they presented the completed masterpiece to the emperor. Da Yu controlling the floods is 224 centimeters tall, 96 centimeters wide, and weighs 5.3 tons. It is the biggest jade sculpture in China. Shaped like a mountain peak, it shows how painstaking quarrying into the mountain to extract the rock was. The front of the piece shows peaks of different heights, while people are presented in minute detail on the mountain cliff their overall arrangement attentive to every detail. Nowadays, the principal tool in jade sculpture is the diamond drill. Because it is much stronger than jade, it can be easily used to carve into the shape. The modern jade techniques include relief sculpture, hollowing out sculpture for window lattices and archways, incrustation, and regular sculpture among others. The production of jade sculptures requires great creativity Nonetheless, because the sculpture must deal with the type of jade stone he or she is working with, its color, its shape, and other factors, this greatly limits the use it can be put to. This is particularly the case with sculptures of humans, flowers, and birds or animals. In this sense, the material dictates the masterpiece. Cutting out the impurities in jade is one of the most important preliminary steps to making the piece purer and brighter. The design of the piece will have to work with whatever the shape the stone takes after this cleaning process. The perfect jade is seldom seen. Jade sculptors will often work with all the materials they have at their disposal, turning blemishes into jade by cutting and polishing the material carefully, turning it into a lively and lifelike masterpiece. The often use high relief jade sculptures to make use of a jade plank with one flat surface while the figures are carved on the front. This is particularly useful when used to ornament bottles, furnaces, and other household utensils. The hollowing out follows the principle of the high relief sculpture, except that the background is perforated completely in intricate patterns, giving a bolder distinction of the picture's outlines. These pieces make use of several layers of perspective, creating the illusion of distance with astonishing effectiveness. This great jade Buddha kept at Shenyang in Liaoning province is 2.04 meters tall and weighs seven tons. The great Buddha's warm and benevolent gaze, his posture and cross legs, all allow the exquisite craftsmanship of its sculpture to unfold before our eyes. Today, traditional jade sculpture is entering a new period of creativity. The ancient art of Chinese jade sculptures is thus experiencing a new boom.